To continue with our walking character, which we named George, we're going to need a background uh, image or tile set. And we're going to start off with a, just a single image so that we get the camera and the world bounds working correctly. But eventually we want to use the tile set within tile D and then read it in with from the Flutter Flame game. If you go to itch.io, select 2D and free assets, you can find some of these tile sets. These artists are incredibly talented and they do offer the option, it is an option to pay. I think for the purpose of learning, you could opt for free use. And then if you know you get more serious about it, consider maybe this paying them like 10 bucks or something. The specific tile set I'm going to use is called Serene Village. The author is Lime Zoo. And we're gonna start off with actual the demo map that he has. So he's pre-built a map as a demonstration of the components. And we're actually gonna use this demonstration. It's a GIF right now, but Flame doesn't have animated GIFs in it. So we're gonna then convert it into a PNG file. Once you have the tile set, um, you can then use a map editor, for example, like tile D, which we'll be covering in the future, and create your own map. So we're just using this demo map for, for the size to test how the character moves around this virtual world. So using GIMP, I'm gonna export the animated GIF into just a static, non-moving PNG file just for this demonstration. We've already reduced George down from a 300 by 300 pixel to 200 by 200, but I think he's still gonna be a little bit too big for our game here once we drop in the background because the houses and pathways look pretty small. Fortunately, George, you're gonna to have to get a little bit smaller. So we're gonna put him at 100 by 100 pixels. He's likely still gonna be pretty huge compared to the other assets on the game, but if I make him too small, we won't be able to see it in this uh, demonstration. You can make them smaller in your game if you want to. Drop the background image into your image uh, slash assets or assets slash images folder and then run flutter pub get. I'm going to add the background in it as a sprite component. Uh, just because it's easier since we're dealing with George as a sprite component right now. Declare the background sprite component as background. In the onload method, we're going to have to instantiate the background as a sprite component and load the sprite for the background image. I'm going, to light, I'm going to load the sprite above the background where we instantiate the sprite component so that we can get the size of the sprite later. So uh, we'll use sprite, not sprite component. I'll call it background sprite. And this is where we're going to load the sprite. And we're going to start in the variable background sprite. So instead of loading it at the time of instantiation, we're going to just assign it the property sprite to background sprite and then using the cascade operator we'll assign the size of the sprite component to the original size of the sprite so because the original size of the sprite is larger than the screen size so i did a i had to stop the uh, actual program and then restart it not a hot restart and now the guy is moving around the screen George is walking around and he's kind of big, but I think we're going to live with his larger size so that you can actually see him in the demo. And uh, he should probably be about half the size, right? Maybe, I don't know, 40 pixels or 50 pixels, but uh, then it'd be hard to see. In order to get the map to move and George to explore his entire world, we're going to have the camera of the flame game follow George. So this camera is from Flame, and the method follow component will 
we'll follow George, and then we'll set up the world's bound. So all of this is part of flame. It'll be a rectangle. We're going to have the rectangle be the size of the sprite. So it's going to start at zero, zero, upper left hand corner of our of the entire world, which is the entire size of the sprite, the background sprite. And then it'll be the the size of the background sprite, the uh, X and Y size of it. So we we'll use background dot size dot X and background dot size dot Y. So the, the sprite component has the property size. So now if we move George around the world, hopefully George will, um, the, the background, the world will move with George and it, and it is. So George cannot expand or explore a wider space than his um, original screen world here. Or because we have no bounds for George, he can actually leave the game. So if you set him going to the left, he's going to keep going until you can't see him anymore, which um, would make the game more difficult to play. So in this case, at most games, you would set up a bounds for George. So uh, if he's the easy one, of course, is the, if it's at the left and the top, right? So if he's Greater than zero, we'll subtract it. And if not, George won't move to the left. And for the top portion, um, it's the same thing, right? So if he's, as long as George is greater than, the X is greater than zero and the Y is greater than zero, he'll be able to move. But if not, he just won't move. So for the, uh, the bottom portion, it's, uh, whether it's the, 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 the entire size of the background. So it's the background dot size. Because George's anchor point is actually in the top left corner, we're going to lose him when he goes off the screen. So let's go through it like this, and then I'll fix it in the future. I'm going to leave this error in because it's fairly common. And if the character goes off the screen, you start thinking that your bounds isn't working. Well, it, it is actually working. It's just that the the character stops when it, exactly when it's off the screen. We just need to subtract the width of George for it to work. I'm going to create a final variable for the the character speed so that it's easier for us to make George go faster or slower for our test here. So double, and then she set it to 40. It's still going to be pretty slow. I guess if you move too fast, you might lose him too quickly. So we'll just start slow and be patient. So change all the, instead of plus equals one, to dt times the character speed for all of them. So at this point, we can test George with some of the bounds. He's not going off to the left. It's good. Hopefully, George stops where he goes off. Yep, he's stopping. Good for George. I ran a test, and George did appear to go off the screen. So I'm going to set the character speed now to 80 to make him be a bit faster, to make our test a bit faster. George is great, but he's just a little bit laid back. What we need to do is just subtract the width of George from the background. This is because his anchor point is in the upper left-hand corner, which is the default anchor point, which is, which is fine because 
Um, otherwise, we'd have to adjust the when he goes left. Okay. Is George going to stop? No. He's got a lot of country to go through. Okay, George is stopping. Okay, now we or test the lower uh, portion of the the screen. So we'll subtract George's height from the bounds. And let's see how he goes down here. Okay. George stopped. Fantastic. In the next video, we're going to use a free program called Tile D or Tiled. And we're going to use it with the map or the, the tile set that we just got. So it's the same tile set. If you recall, the original image that we're using in the game is just a demo. The whole purpose is to create your own maps here um, with a bunch of different layers. We can attach collisions to it and read it, read the map into the flame game and then interact with the objects. Subscribe to the channel for future updates on this next video. Have a great day.